Welcome back. Today I'd like to talk to you about improper integrals. And to talk about improper integrals, first we should just kind of review what we know about integration, and then we can get into the idea of an improper integral. So, um, first of all, if we're just looking at our normal situation that we've encountered many times before, we have a function f of x, uh, we have an interval from a to b, and what we've asked in the past and what we studied in Calculus 1 was how do we find the area underneath of a function f of x between a and b. All right, so what we're going to talk about today is, well, a similar situation, except that uh, right here you see that this has some sort of a finite length of this interval that I'm um, integrating over. Uh, I'm integrating from a to b, and this has length b minus a. But what if I were integrating over a region that had infinite length in some way? So let me give you an example. So let's say that we had a function, maybe it looks something like this. Here's my f of x. And I wanted to know, uh, let's say from 1 to infinity, how much area is there under this curve? And this shaded region goes on forever in this direction. So over here, we know how to compute this area. Uh, as long as we can take an antiderivative, we take an integral from a to b of my function f of x dx. And so it would make sense over here if I said something like here, I'd like to take the integral, let's say, from 1 to infinity of f of x dx. And... <clears throat> So when I write something like this, integral from 1 to infinity, you kind of have an idea of what I'm talking about. So it's kind of like, come on, just take the area under the curve f of x from 1 to infinity. But what I'd like to remind you is that when we were back over in this situation, how did we actually get this area? And if you remember, the way that I take the area under a curve between a and b is I chop this thing up into a lot of little rectangles, right? We chop this up into rectangles, and then we added up the area of those rectangles, and then we let the number of rectangles go to infinity. But notice that the number of rectangles never actually is infinite. Because if you had infinitely many rectangles in between A and B, they'd each have length zero, which is no area at all. So we can't put uh, infinitely many rectangles in between A and B, only a finite amount. So in some sense, what I'm saying is I can only add up a finite number of rectangles. I can't add up infinite rectangles. Similar over here, but if I chop this thing up into rectangles, I actually do get infinite rectangles. And that's bad, okay? That's not going to work out for us to have infinite rectangles. So I need a way of adding up all of this area without chopping this thing up into an infinite number of rectangles. That's not going to work for me. So what I do instead is this. Uh, I'm going to be kind of clever, and I'm going to say, okay, instead of adding up all the area from 1 to infinity, what if we just stopped somewhere? So I add up all the area from 1 to, let's say, I'll call this point B. And then I say, let's just stop at B. So don't take any of that area. OK, so now what I could do is I could say, let's just take the area from 1 to B of f of x dx. And then let's start moving the b. And as I move the b, I get closer and closer to my actual answer. So move the b toward infinity, and I'm always just adding up a finite number of rectangles. But as b goes toward infinity, I'm getting closer and closer to adding up what I would get if I had all the area between all the way to infinity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this is equal to the limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from 1 to b of f of x dx. Okay, so over here, when we're just integrating over a finite region, everything's fine. 
over here, this is what I call an improper integral, where I'm trying to take area out <coughs> to infinity or maybe to minus infinity or possibly even from minus infinity to infinity. And the way that I do it is I say, okay, let's take the area from one to some point B and then let B go toward infinity. Notice B never actually gets there and that's the key. Uh, but the limit as B goes to infinity will give me what I call the integral from 1 to infinity of f of x dx. So as we go through these problems, what I'll do is I'll set up integrals that look like this as a limit, then take the antiderivative, plug in b, plug in 1, and then take the limit as b goes to infinity. Okay, This is uh, the first type of improper integral, and that is the type where I'm actually integrating over an infinite interval. Okay, there's another type that we're about to discuss where uh, <clears throat> the area itself shoots up at a point to infinity. So let's talk about that now. The second type of improper integral that can happen is demonstrated right here. And that is that we have a function, um, and it is, we are integrating it over the interval from 0 to 3. But what happens is at some point in between 0 and 3, in this case it's 0, this function actually shoots up to infinity. So it's kind of hard to know in some sense, does this, is there an infinite amount of area here? Is there a finite amount of area here? What is it? Uh, and similarly, we've got to be a little careful because if we're dividing this up into little rectangles, some of the rectangles can get fairly tall here. So we're not sure. This could possibly be infinite area going up forever right here at this point zero. So how we're going to do this is very similar to how we do the other case. And that is that we're going to write it as a limit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, especially here, what it is f of zero here? Well, it's undefined. There's no functional value at zero. So it's kind of hard to talk about the integral from 0 to 3 of the function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, uh, since I can't actually maybe plug in 0 to this function, let's instead take the integral from a to 3 of f of x dx, and then take the limit as x goes to a from the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a point in here like A, right here, and then let's just integrate between A and 3. So that is just our typical normal integration over an interval. A has a functional value, 3 has a functional value, everything's fine. And then let's let A get very, very close to 0. And as it gets close to 0, what we define that value to b as we take the limit as x goes to a from the right is we define it to be this improper integral. Okay. Now, third thing I want to talk about really quick is what if we had some sort of an integral where <clears throat> we had area starting at negative infinity and going all the way to infinity. And this is the last case that we kind of need to talk about how would we deal with such a thing. And how we deal with it is the following. Uh, if we want to integrate, let's say that th this is the function f of x, and we want to integrate that from minus infinity to infinity of f of x dx, then what I want to do is let's break it up into two pieces. Okay, so the first piece uh, it doesn't really matter where I break it, but it seems like for this function, 0 would be a good place to break it into two pieces. So I could integrate this from minus infinity to 0 of f of x dx, and then add on 0 to infinity of f of x dx. All right. <clears throat> now, this in and of itself is an improper integral. This also is an improper integral, so each of those would have to be written as limits. So this first one I might write as the limit as x 
uh, goes to, let's see, um, I'm sorry, as A goes to negative infinity of the integral from A to zero of f of x dx plus the limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from 0 to b of f of x dx. So the way that I would compute integrating from negative infinity to infinity of a function is break it up into two integrals, each of which are improper, so have to be written as limits.